Today, we are going to talk about collaboration and culture in the area of DevOps. This was the foundation of the DevOps movement and where it all came from. And a lot of times people are misguided on what that actually means. And it all starts with this word culture, which to some can seem like a, a curse word. But the reality is that every team has a culture and every cross-functional team has a culture. You can't avoid it. Cultures are created either organically or deliberately. So when you hear the word culture, don't think of it as a, you know, we just all need to get along, let's be friends type thing. Think of it as a deliberate mechanism for establishing a culture that supports the bottom line of the business and supports collaborations, especially cross-team collaboration. Because the reality is engineering teams and DevOps teams that establish an effective culture can prove that they are better at delivering value to the business when they build their application. And the reason I know this is true is you can take the people in engineering teams from a high-performing development shop to a low-performing development shop. And if you were to ask the managers in either one of those teams if they hired bad talent, of course, everybody believes they've hired the best engineers that they could hire. So what makes them different? And really what makes them different is the culture. So those high-performing engineering teams are more effective and efficient at communicating and collaborating, and low-performing engineering teams simply are not. But again, culture is not all about hoodies and pizza parties. And that's a lot of times what people think, especially in the early days of DevOps. This is definitely changing. But when you start to talk about serious stakeholders in this collaboration, IT and security, this impression still exists to some degree. And who are we talking about? Who are the people that need to collaborate better to build better applications and more secure applications? And that's, of course, the developers. You know, that's the first thing we think about when building applications. Then you have all of the development support functions, which are quality engineering, DevOps, and SRE. And then finally, you have, you know, the entire infrastructure and compliance and security around the applications running in production, which is IT and security. All of these teams need to collaborate, but it's still a work in progress. What you find is that you see a gap between developers and the support functions, and that's what these lines represent, that's fairly significant. The developers are really good at communicating inter-team, but once the code gets shipped, they still challenge communicating with the rest of the people involved in software delivery. What's interesting about the next three roles, quality engineers, DevOps, and SRE, is these roles are actually designed to facilitate collaboration. They all have a, a more holistic point of view of the processes and the application. And largely, the SRE is a very intentional role to improve communication because they're an operational peer inside of the development team. They may not even report into engineering. They, they very often report into operations and IT. But the real barrier where there is a huge firewall that needs to be broken down, and especially when we talk about things like application security, is in the area of IT and security. And this is largely a work in progress. So how do you execute culture? And what you'll find in most organizations that this list I'm giving you, usually number four is number one. It's usually reverse. And this is where most enterprises go wrong. The first thing is a goal knowing what the expected outcome is, what you want an effective and deliberate culture to do for the business. Second is to build a strategy around it. Third is to have a common information model for information sharing across the teams, because what you find is security professionals are not speaking the same language as developers. And then last, but very important component is the tools that support the execution of that common information model and that strategy. A lot of organizations will lead with the tools and expect the tools to create the culture and that simply is not the case. So Dave, why don't you take over and build on the uh, tool aspects of it? 
tooling is actually a, a major portion, and as Chris uh, pointed out, it is quite often where people start. That's not necessarily the best approach, but especially when you're looking in organizations, um, they quite often go, oh, we need to do this. Let's go find a tool that does this for us. There are decisions that need to be made up front before you even get into the tooling. I worked at one place, for instance, where the first question you had to ask every team was, what was their preferred communication method? Uh, some people wanted email, some people wanted Slack. There was one entire team that only would respond if it came out in WhatsApp. Uh, you could send them emails all day long, you could send text messages, but unless it came through WhatsApp, they never got back to you. So this is not a tool basis, but tools can assist. So. When we look at this, one of the things is that even the, the people that do surveys, when they ask me this, DevOps successfully are right tools and the right people here. But the top factors are how collaborative they are and how well they problem solve. The little chart over here on the left, the dark blue is the number one choice. The middle blue is the number two choice. And the, the light blue is the number three choice of the people that came into this team. And you notice that I booked in this, there's about eight of these overall here, but it's collaboration and alignment with other teams that are both part of this top three category. Those are incredibly important. So we talk about communication, we're actually talking about collaboration. Anybody can send an email, it's what happens to the email after the fact that becomes important. What are some of these popular tools inside of here? Well, Slack is still number one here. Microsoft Teams gets heard a lot about. You'll see Trello creep into this. You'll see something called Basecamp if you haven't run into Basecamp. You'll see Jira, Jira uses communication platforms. You can see request tools come into here and requirements tools come into here. Uh, you'll also find it on phones. You'll find it with just standard general, generic email. And this is a partial list. So there are lots of ways of doing this, but these are the ones that most often come up when people are saying, how do I share the information I need to share? Not from a product specific viewpoint, but from a more generic viewpoint. When we start looking at this, the process flow for something happening, this is past the developer point. It will go back to the developer here. So an alert comes in on a service, that alert, leads to a timeout error. That timeout error leads to an infrastructure problem. That infrastructure problem leads to a configuration error, and the configuration error leads into a memory leak. And so this is actually a fairly common approach for that model here. The alert comes into the service, and it comes in and it goes either to the SRE team or possibly even to the ops team. So this is one of our personas that gets touched in a single instance here. That leading to a timeout error, it's usually discovered being a, a distributed tracing model. The, the tracing model quite often is DevOps engineering or the software engineers directly inside of here. That leads to the infrastructure problem that's showing up here, usually a metric again here. It's usually discovered by DevOps engineering or the SRE team here, which then leads to a configuration error which gets handed off to ops or a DevOps engineering team, which then leads to a memory leak inside of logs, which gets returned back to the developer. So we can actually have multiple touch points for similar teams, but maybe not the same person in each of these teams. And again, single instance, number of communication points, minimum of probably five happening inside of a large company for any instance that, that comes into play here. While each piece of data is important to them in keeping track of this, these different groups are using the data differently. And, and because of this, we need to be, make sure that we are getting the information to the team in the format that makes it possible for them to do their job as quickly and appropriately as possible. We live in an instant gratification society. One of my favorite lines here, 3.7 seconds can mean a lost sale. Eight seconds is considered to be the average attention span of somebody looking at a computer for this. That's how many different things are happened here. And alerts tend to be powered by the metrics, but all these other pieces, how do we go from metric to trace, back to metric, to infrastructure and into the application without having to repeat lots and lots of steps inside of here. So software engineers do tend to look at logs more and they may look up logs in this tracing aspect. 
But generally speaking, this is the flow that you'll see when we move through this. So the tools need to work together here. The communications have to be as seamless as possible. And they have to be agnostic to time zone barriers. Today, we also live in a distributed development and deployment culture for this. And it is not unusual for a large microservices architecture, for instance, to have different teams in different places working to produce different microservices. So that communication has to be focused to the right team. If it starts from an alert, it needs to go to the people who would be responsible for that specific kind of alert here. As it goes into software engineering, it needs to be focused to the software engineering team. And we should not have to repeat any of those, those nasty little forensic steps. This is a while back, but a certain very large internet search and in cloud company, whose name I will not mention, once had a problem with doing this. They had one of the largest environments for infrastructure, and they had applications like crazy running off this. And they had 17 discrete and different tools to help resolve a problem in any single point. None of those tools passed information. So every time that you went through, you would have to start over with the new tool to get to the point where you were with the previous tool. There was no shortcuts. People rapidly decided that couldn't work. It led to them start trying to put things together. And what they found is that putting things together is not quite as easy as it looks on paper. We also need to be bi-directional. I need to know not only that I passed it off, but somebody has received it and that somebody is taking action on it. And it needs to be conversational. This is not a, oh, here, it's your problem now. We no longer, in a DevOps culture, we don't have a throw over the wall approach. We are collaborative and we work together to make this happen. So the information exchange has to have details and it has to have a decision flow so that we can also track through how the decisions got reached for what the resolution was so that we can learn from it and, and hopefully not have to repeat that exercise in the future. Some basic concepts here, and I've got kind of, kind of four things that are really important to think about here. Your collaboration tools, your communications tools must be automatic. You shouldn't have to stop and go, oh, let me do the following steps to send this. That can be as, as simple as having the tool screenshot your current environment and send it to the right person without having to go through, in, in Mac terms, press command control shift four, select the region and drop it into an email. The communications via these tools should get to the right spot and you should be aware that it's gotten to the right spot. I should tell you that it's there. Alerts, which power particularly this incident process here, need to be authentic and they need to be trustworthy. And here we start pulling in, are they AI aware? Do they understand seasonality? Can they look at historical trends? Can they look at outlier capabilities here? And therefore, the alerts have to be trustworthy so that when we pass this alert from team to team, that communication is also trusted in front and inside of each separate group here. You know, think about that flow. It touches at least three separate groups. And in, case, in the case I was looking at, it probably actually touches more than that. It requires a different point of information for each group, but nobody has extra time to go back and repeat the forensics. And honestly, a developer probably may not know how the ops side actually arrived at their conclusion where the problem exists. They may not actually want to know and they may not need to know. And so we need to make sure that we pull those pieces together. Keep in mind here, an alert on one service, talking to one group or going into one group driven by the metrics, leading to an error coming from a totally different tool concept here, leading to infrastructure, which moves us out of the application space into the infrastructure space here, leading to a configuration error, leading to the application problem results. The resolution requires clean communications pathways through each one of these people. And it is important that that be as clean as possible. You want this environment to not have to repeat forensic steps to get to a conclusion. The only time you want to repeat forensic steps is if the conclusion that's passed turns out to be invalid. And you want to communicate that back. That's the bi-directional nature for this.